Many South Africans will probably be pleased to see the back of 2023 with its persistent fault lines. Now, economists say the Southern African nation's economic outlook in 2024 will be shaped by global economic trends, geopolitical developments, uh, domestic uh, infrastructural challenges, effective implementation of reform commitments by government, and the pending elections in this year. Now, it is also believed that South Africa's economic performance in 2024 will be driven by trends in exports, consumer spending, and investment. Despite these, uh, there are still intimidating factors such as inflation, negative growth rates, projections, monetary policies, fiscal deficits, global economic shocks, and price instability, among others, which may result in headwinds as it moves into 2024 proper. Against this background, what might South Africa's crystal ball look like for its economy? This morning, Christel Vilgun, uh, economist and senior manager at PwC South Africa, joins me to unpack this. It's nice to have you around. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. So uh, before we start talking about 2024, let's uh, quickly look at South Africa's uh, economy in retrospect. 2023 wasn't particularly a fantastic year for the Southern African nation. Uh, a faltering economy, weak rand, getting on the wrong side of global financial laws and the power crisis were the much of what it had to face last year. How would you describe the country's economy in 2023? Certainly a challenging situation. Uh, I think 2022 was probably a bit of a better year. If we just think of economic growth, for example, it was definitely better. Last year, 2023, bit of a mixed situation. There was good news and bad news, something that South Africa often sees from an economic perspective. So the good news is probably we experienced the peak in inflation. Inflation rates are coming down. We've seen a peak in interest rates, for example. So there's a little bit of good news. We also saw a decline in electricity load shedding as the year came to an end. So some good news to think of. On the other side, weak economic growth. Uh, I think many economists were hoping economic growth would get to about 1% last year, and it's looking much closer to about 0.3 or 0.4%. And when we see slow economic growth, we know there are added pressures on government finances, for example. We experience lots of challenges with transport. So uh, a mixed situation. Uh, we would always wanted it to have been a better year. So I guess we, we take the good news that we have, but many of these challenges are carrying over into 2024. So it's certainly not really a point of enthusiasm when we look at the positive points, because these challenges that we have to economic growth and employment growth, for example, these challenges are continuing into 2024 and will be sticking around for quite some time. Well, a little bit here and a little bit there is the way you are describing the economic outlook for South Africa last year. Uh, some financial experts have uh, even come out to criticize government's plan and, and described it as a poor handling of both internal and external shocks that negatively affected the economy. So in your own opinion, uh, did the administration of Cyril Maposa perform creditively in tackling the problems that bedeviled the country's economy? I think as a country, our biggest challenge is always not getting a plan together, but implementing the plan. We have a long-term national development plan. We have shorter term plans and in, in the wake of COVID-19, we have an economic recovery plan. All of these plans and policies are actually mostly positive. Many in the business community have welcomed these plans, but as a country, our challenge is implementation. And that means that taking that plan from a document to actually getting the fruits of those ideas. And in South Africa, our challenge is that we've got many obstacles to implementation. In other words, we are not seeing the fruits of our plans because we're not implementing them well. And, and the challenges are diverse. It could be a combination of not having enough money within the public or the private sector, not necessarily having cooperation between different parts of society, government, labor, business, for example, uh, having the right skills in the right place, again, whether public or private sector, to implement these plans. So I think where we are at the moment with South Africa's challenges, specifically with electricity and transport, but public sector services in general. We've got this long-standing challenge of not being able to quickly implement policies, even though the policies are good and the intentions are good and the possible results could be very positive as well. Uh, that's not something that's going to change anytime quickly. So I think the criticism about the slow speed of implementation 
it's quite valid, but it's something that has been around for a long, long time. It's not recent. It's not just because we've got this electricity or transport challenge. It is a long-term situation in South Africa, which again carries into 2024 when we think of the challenges being faced this year as well. So talking about the challenges um, that um, South Africa would face in 2024, which is actually a continuum of what happened last year. We're talking about global economic climate uh, issues, of course, uh, unpredictable geopolitical shifts. We talked about um, power crisis. There are also issues around domestic efforts to overcome infrastructural obstacles and in some other areas, uh, the pursuit of transformative reforms. Uh, even as you have also mentioned the like a desk attitude um, in implementing those reforms. So those are part of the things that would um, shape South Africa's economy in 2024. But then we'd like to know, uh, I would like to know, in what proportion do you think these factors would affect or influence um, the country's economy? What are the focal points for you? I think maybe let's consider three things. First is the international situation. So we know the international economy is under pressure, interest rates are high, lots of geopolitical uncertainty with conflicts in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, for example, supply chains still very vulnerable, not really in a much better position than we saw during COVID-19 in terms of uncertainty, disruption, cost, all of those elements. South Africa is dependent on exports and imports. So that means we are reliant on this global economy where the outlook is quite uncertain. So for me, that's one issue that we need to deal with. The second and third issues, which are proportionately the most important for our economy, would be electricity and transport. Now, the electricity situation, the load shedding that we experience, we've seen this for the five, past five or six years as a big problem. And we have periods of less and periods of more load shedding. So the past two weeks or so, Nothing of concern because the factories and the mining, for example, were closed, the big industrial consumers. But we are right now, as I'm speaking, back with electricity load shedding. Even though most of these industries have not returned to work, we are seeing, again, reliability challenges with power generation. So the problem in 2024 with electricity is it's still unpredictable when power supply will be reliable and when there will be disruptions. And that is for across the economy, the uncertainty about when lights are going to be on or off. The second big challenge, which has really become a big problem in 2023, is in transport and specifically railways and the ports system, the harbors, for example, which are both managed by the public sector entities. The challenge at the moment is the slow speed at which containers are moving into the country, for example, or disruptions to railways that are exporting minerals. Uh, to big buyers like China and Europe, for example. So these utilities, transport and, and power, are probably our biggest challenges for 2024. The biggest inhibitors to economic growth, the biggest inhibitors to export growth, and crucially to employment growth, which is something we really need a lot of. So aside from the global situation, transport and power, those are the biggest ones impacting our economy in 2024. Uh, there are also um, uncertainties rising from the forthcoming elections. Uh, both local and international investors would be watchful of where to pitch their tents investment-wise to cut possible losses. So what impact will the coming polls have for the country's economy this year? In general, elections do not really impact the economy. We have these national elections every five years. They come, they go, and the country continues. We have a public holiday that people go and vote. And the next day they go back to work and everything in general returns to normal. So it, in, a, in a normal year, we wouldn't have a problem with elections or think of the impact on the economy. What's different this year is that many opinion polls are showing that the ruling party were, could end up not getting another majority vote in the elections. In other words, getting less than 50 percent of the vote. And that sends us into a situation where there's talk about the possibility of a coalition government, many different options of what that could look like. South Africa has not had a coalition national government within its democratic system over the past 30 years. So that's something completely new. And the impact on the economy could be generally the uncertainty after the elections of what that government could look like and what its policies could be. Likely not a big difference from what we have at the moment, 
but still we are moving into a political situation that we have not experienced before. And for businesses, that means, wait a minute, let's see what happens. It means that as we near the elections in probably May this year, businesses will be saying, let's wait before we make big decisions. Let's see what happens with the elections. That's something that hasn't really happened a lot in the past 30 years. So that's the element of uncertainty. Elections are generally not a problem, but this year the outcome could be different. Could be, not necessarily, but it could be different from the results that we've seen in recent years. All right, uh, Christy, earlier on you talked about um, the drag, or you complained about the drag on the railway system, most especially this particular system that is being used in transporting coal and platinum and all the minerals in and out of South Africa. But then economists uh, have revealed that several indicators point towards potential growth for the country looking at that particular sector. Now, talking about exports, fueled by rising demand for South Africa's commodities like platinum and coal that I mentioned earlier, will global consumer spending rise for the country's commodities this year? Well, we are hoping that there's better demand for exports. We know that there's pressure in the economies of our biggest trading partners in China and Europe, for example. We also know that many of the commodities that we do export are in high demand. You mentioned platinum. Uh, platinum and palladium are part of the manufacturing process of motor vehicles, and especially these days with the focus on climate and emissions, they are part of the vehicle systems that clean up the emissions, and that's something that is in great demand globally. We have several in crucial minerals for battery production, which is also used in the automotive sector, but electronics, for example, computers, smartphones as well. So there's certainly demand for our products. It's a question of being able to actually get it to consumers, actually getting it to the manufacturers, for example, in China. And our challenge is firstly moving it from the mine to the ports. That's the railway challenge. Getting it from the ports onto the ship. That's the port challenge. And then actually getting it to China, for example, uh, where we look at general supply chain challenges uh, along the ocean routes, for example. So there's certainly demand for what South Africa is producing both in commodities, minerals, for example, also vehicles that we export. It's just a challenge of getting it to the clients on time and at a reasonable cost. If you can't get it on time and at a reasonable cost, they might look somewhere else to buy. So even in the pressured global economy, South Africa has so much to offer the rest of the world. We just need to be able to get that product to the rest of the world. Well, uh, it's also been said that um, South Africa's inflation has been quite stable for the past years, uh, leveling off between 3.2 and 6.9 percent, and is in fact expected to stabilize at around 4.5 or 4.8 percent in 2024. Uh, you mentioned it earlier, talking about um, inflation being a challenge for South Africa. Are we expected to see more easing in inflation figures and probably interest rate cuts this year? So inflation is on a, a slow downward trend. Uh, the most recent peak was in the middle of 2022. 2023, we had a, some moderation in inflation and forecasts are pointing to more in terms of that positive trend in 2024. Our reserve bank targets an inflation rate of between three and 6% and they actually favor the middle of that band, about four and a half percent. So our most recent numbers were above that. And expectations are that towards the end of 2024, we could be close towards that 4.5% level. So our forecast for this year for average inflation is about 5%. So that's inside the target band. And that means that there is room for our central bank to start cutting interest rates. Uh, we know that during COVID, interest rates was very low. And since then, they've increased quite significantly, sort of a normalization process, but also added uh, upward adjustments because of the elevated inflation. And many economists expect that interest rates have peaked and that they could come down from about the middle of this year. Now that's good news for South African consumers. Uh, we've been through a challenging few years of economic and employment growth. And at the same time with interest rates going up, that means that on the spending side, on the household debt side, there's also been lots of pressure. So South Africans would definitely welcome a forecast that says interest rates could start coming down from the middle of this year. We don't think it's going to be a significant decline, but there will be some relief in, in lending rates second half of this year and in 2025 as well. Now, looking at the positivity that might come to South Africa's economy, uh, we know that South Africa is a mixed economy, generating most of its GDP 
through the services sector, especially tourism. So, uh, well, however, anyway, the country struggles with the issues around um, unemployment and poverty. Uh, are we expected to see declines in these two areas uh, this year? Because uh, for people in South Africa, whether or not they have um, the purchasing power or they're able to purchase commodity at affordable prices, one thing that will be key is if they are gainfully employed. So what should we expect uh, this year? So there we come from a good news story already. So 2023, employment growth was better than expected better than you would have expected given what economic growth looked like and given our other challenges. And I think one of the reasons is that businesses are becoming much more resilient against electricity load shedding, whether it is because they install solar panels or they have their own generation capacity in other ways. Businesses are doing better than expected when it comes to the electricity situation. So jobs growth has positive momentum coming into 2024. Economic growth forecast also looking better. So that means employment growth forecast also looking better. So I'd say that it's possible that this year could again be a good one for employment creation. And it is possible that our long-term increase in the unemployment rate could slow down. Now that's very important for us as a society where we've got big challenges with poverty and inequality and the highest unemployment rate in the world and specifically youth unemployment which is a big, big concern for us as a country. So there's, there's a positive light, I think, for 2024. If we think about what happened last year, employment growth could look very good. And as inflation comes down, it means that we can buy more with the wages that you earn. So you see more jobs, you see more uh, wages being earned, and you see inflation coming down. So that's good news for the consumer situation. We also add the outlook of interest rates starting to come down. All of those things actually send us a bit more of a positive uh, signal about the consumer in 2024 compared to 2023. So at the start of this year, I think that's something positive we need to, to cling to. Mm. Now, um, let me quickly refer you to what um, the IMF said in our forecast. Uh, they predicted that world economic growth in 2023 will be at 3%, easing slightly to 2.9% in 2024 this year, but with wide divergences between regions and countries. Now, Sub-Saharan Africa's growth prospects for the year ahead is said to be modest. So in global economic scale, how do you think South Africa's economy will fare as compared to others uh, in the region? In a global perspective, South Africa is not doing great compared to other emerging markets. If we just think about economic growth, for the past decade, South Africa's economic growth has been lower than the rest of the emerging markets group. And, and we've talked about many of the challenges behind those, the reasons why we've seen slow economic growth. In an African and a sub-Sahara context as well, South Africa's economic growth has been lower than average. We would see economic growth of one point. 1.5% in South Africa, for example, and then Sub-Saharan Africa grows by 3.5 or 4%. And our biggest challenge is electricity and transport. And it's not something that other African countries don't also experience as challenges, but many African countries are seeing significant economic growth rates that are actually closing the gap between their size and South Africa's economy. Now this year, South Africa's economy could very well again be the largest on the continent just depends on the different types of forecasts you have for exchange rates. So it could be that South Africa's economy in dollar terms could be bigger than that of Nigeria, for example. Uh, there's a big exchange rate element in that type of calculation, but it's not something that's going to be long term. I think by, by next year, Nigeria will probably be the biggest economy again, simply because economic growth prospects look better. So even though South Africa is one of the biggest economies on the continent, it doesn't mean its economic growth is so significant. And even in the countries around us in the southern part of the continent, you can see economic growth rates of three, four, five percent, which is much healthier. So we remain in southern Africa, for example, the biggest economy, the most industrialized, uh, the largest population. But growth rates uh, in terms of economic growth and jobs growth, for example, both are doing better in some of our neighbor economies. So there's some positive and negative when you look at that type of regional comparison. But I'm quite certain that where sub-Saharan Africa could be growing at a certain speed this year, South Africa will still definitely be at a slower pace. So as we wrap up, um, Christy, now one other major issue that we just need to quickly breeze over is the uncertainty 
um, for the economy, which has been the serious deterioration in South Africa's public finances. Uh, that was captured in the medium-term budget of policy statement in November last year. Understandably, cash has been a uh, uh, as actually a scarce um, issue uh, for most African economies. But in South Africa's case, I'd like to know, aside uh, probably projected uh, um, FDI inflows, are there other ways that a country can raise funds to fill its budgets and economy? And what, macro, um, what macroeconomic outlook or projection or measure would you prefer to help it uh, have a stable economy this year? I think that answer is told to us in every budget speech. You mentioned the medium-term budget in November. Upcoming next month in February, we've got our normal annual budget. And the finance minister will say the same thing. To get more taxes in, in other words, to get more re resources to government, to grow our economy, to build infrastructure, to build hospitals and schools, the key way to get more taxes is to grow this economy faster. 1% economic growth is not enough. We need three, four, five percent economic growth because then more people will have jobs and they will pay personal income tax. Companies will get more revenue. They will pay more corporate tax. People will spend money and we'll see more value added tax. To get to that point, we need to implement all of these reforms that have been lagging for such a long time. We've mentioned it in this discussion about the challenges in implementing policy, implementing reforms. Once we get those things underway, we can see this economy growing faster. We can see more foreign investment, better mm -hmm. business confidence. We can see people spending more money because they know they will have a job next year. If we get all of those things right, we can grow this economy. We can get more resources to government that will narrow the budget deficit. It will bring down our public debt. So I expect the finance minister next month will say the same thing. To get finances right in the public sector, we need a stronger and faster growing economy. And I think that's a wish that we have for 2024 in most countries. Fast economic growth, it'll create more jobs and it'll help us solve many of society's challenges by reducing inequality, reducing poverty. So for South Africa 2024, the hope is strong economic growth and the positives that come with that. Christopher Yoon, economist and senior manager at PWC South Africa. Thank you so much for your time.